crispy. Hey, what's good, viewer? This is Spanky. Today I've got the Trainer's Choice Lugia, or Lugia, or Lugia, however you want to pronounce it. Um, Trainer's Choice is kind of like a special series that Tomi Takar has been doing. They've been rolling them out. They've uh, had a series before this, but they're coming back and they're doing a lot better than they did before. I'm not sure what exactly the one means up here, because I know, like I just said, that they have done a Trainer's Choice series before this, so this should be technically two. I have no idea how the numbering's working, or if this is just a really long extension of one, because the other ones came out like a year ago. But enough of that. I will be doing the rest of these legendary figures, like Rayquaza, let's see, Kyogre, and Gor Groudon. There you go. I got it. I'll be doing those ones as well, so stay tuned and watch all of those. But for now, let's just open this one up. So here's Lugia out of package, looking pretty fierce. I do like the mold overall. It's not terribly exciting. It doesn't look very dynamic. I do like the art on the box, which is a lot similar to the one on this card, where he's kind of more open wings, swooping down. This is kind of him just landed and doing a little scream. It's not bad, but it's just not a terribly exciting, exciting pose. Overall, the paint is done pretty well. I'm not seeing any uh, mishaps or anything wrong with it. He does come with a few articulated points here. Let's see, his wings will go up and down like so. They just swivel. They do come out rather easily. I'm not really sure what the point of the articulation is. You can do a few things, but I mean, he just, let me adjust my camera and move this. He just doesn't look right when you articulate it. I think I would have been more pleased with the static pose, which is a really nice pose that they formed and just kept in there because the articulation just doesn't seem to serve much purpose. There might be a few things here and there you can do with it, but I, I guess I just would have liked a static pose. Same with the feet. I mean, there's just not much you can do when you move the feet other than the pose that they were predetermined to be set in. So probably something like this with this foot back and this one forward. I just don't see any other pose but this. You can change a little bit. But hopefully you guys are understanding what I'm trying to say is that the articulation, while is neat, just doesn't seem to serve much purpose in the overall figure because it seems as if it was made for a static pose. So why give it articulation? That's my two cents. Uh, the legs pop out rather easily as well. And I missed this on the Rayquaza review, but I'm always complaining about the giant you know, product codes and stuff like that on the Tomi Takar figures. So this time, I'm going to give them a little praise and saying, you know, congratulations on finally hiding the product codes and not using those ugly, ugly codes that you guys do before. The ones I'm talking about are like the ones right here in the back. But trust me, there are some that are way worse. Watch one of my other reviews and listen to me complain about that for 25 minutes. Not 25 minutes, you know, but I'm over-exaggerating, but I do complain about them a lot. So congratulations for finally hiding the code. This is great. It's underneath where you can't see it. No one's ever going to notice it. It's not ugly on the back and huge, so congratulations. There's a little one right here, but I didn't even notice it until just now. So finally, thank you for hiding that product code. Good job. Keep doing that. Um, let's do a quick size comparison. So here's Lugia compared to a D-Arts Blastoise, a 3 to 4 inch Mega Venusaur, and a nor quote unquote normal size Tom Tomi Takara Charmander. And I say normal size because there's not really a scale in a Tomi Takara, but this is about the size that they've traditionally released in the past. These Mega Venusaur and other Mega Pokemon they've released in the past are a bit bigger than these ones. And then I believe they're calling this legendary scale. Don't quote me. And then this is the biggest scaled figures that Tomi has released so far. And this is actually made by Bandai Japan. So not even the same company, I don't believe. They might be the same company. But definitely not the same makers. It's not Tomi Takara. They're not affiliated in that sense. Um, there is no real scale to scale at all. I mean, Lugia is definitely much bigger than Charmander. Um, a little bit bigger than Blastoise, I believe. Let's see, we got his stuff right here. He's seven feet, 17 feet tall, so I'm almost positive he's going to be bigger than Blastoise. And he also comes with this little card. All of them come with this card in the back. It's their name in different languages. It looks like he has the same exact name in every language. It tells you what region they're from, the Johto region. 
and uh, their size and their weight and stuff like that in meters and kegs and uh, pounds and feet and it tells you what type they are so he's a psychic flying I mentioned this in all my reviews it's just something small he also comes with this really cool uh, base here I think it's mostly just for marketing purposes to have the light reflect on it but I just like to point out that it came with it because I think it's really cool and I'll probably most likely use it to uh, display my figures at home thanks for watching guys Stay tuned for my other reviews. Check out Big Bad Toy Store in the description below. I will be doing the rest of these legendary figures. So Rayquaza, Groudon, and Kyogre. I didn't forget that time. I'll be doing those. So stay tuned and keep a lookout for those. I really do appreciate you watching my review. Until next time, peace out.